Okay, folks, uh, I want to welcome everybody to uh, the joint meeting between the Recreation Commission and the uh, Abingdon Town Council, and I want to thank you all for uh, coming out this evening. Uh, we have a really large crowd, and we've been having large crowds at all of our council meetings meetings recently. I began to wonder about what kind of nightlife we have in town. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something to worry about. Uh, Kim, would you call the roll, please? I'll go. Mr. Bradley? Here. Ms. Quetch? Here. Mr. Webb? Here. Ms. Patterson? Here. And Mayor Craig? Here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I would like to move the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Abingdon Town Council meeting of the 23rd of May, 2018. Is there a second? Second. Stephen Steele with CHA Design and Construction Solution and a discussion on the sports complex. Uh, Ken Bennett. Uh, you want to introduce Mr. Steele? Yes. Uh, we were just talking. I've known uh, Mr. Steele since uh, before he had children. He told me that his daughter is now driving. So that's, <laughs> that's aging both of us. <laughs> but. Uh, Mr. Steele is with uh, CHA uh, Resolving Engineers and is uh, doing the design work on the sports complex. So I'll let you take it from there, Steve. Okay, I think I've had a host of different groups and folks I presented this to different periods of time, but never at the same time. So, good opportunity to give an update to everybody involved on where we are, what facilities are planned, for the project schedule as far as where we are as a design group and then um, I guess I'll turn it over to Ken and Matt to see kind of what information we want to pass back and forth while we've got all of these groups in one room. So to give you a little bit of history this layout that you see was in collaboration with the Food City project that is going on <clears throat> as we speak and we're working with them to balance the site as that site is being prepared. The sports complex site is coming up. They have all of the 3D elevations loaded into their machines so the equipment operators know where things are going to be. We have different um, requirements for compaction, where structures are, and that's a, that's a really good group that we're working with up there. I attend meetings with them and make sure that we're all moving in one direction so that everybody gets to the finish line with a successful project. So that being said, we're in the process of designing this layout as you see and I'll just go over some of the details. I don't see a pointer in here, but I can use this. So this is where the Food City project will end with a roundabout and so the town project begins with all of what you see in color and so we've got two parking lots one at the north part of the project one at the southern part of the project this parking lot will provide access to two soccer fields the soccer fields have their own concession stand we also have a concession stand uh, slash scores box here centrally located with the pinwheel of four baseball slash softball fields some a couple have skin a couple don't we work closely with the rec department Kevin and his folks to size the soccer fields to make sure that they would meet the proper requirements for different levels of play we also size the baseball slash softball fields accordingly and you can see they all are different sizes there's a 350 foot field there's a 300 foot field there's a field that will be just for little league we tried to make sure that there was a going to meet the needs of all the different groups that the town would be providing uh, this facility for also in the bottom corner there is a multi-use field we're calling that you can see it's got an odd looking 
right angle coming out the top and bottom. That's just to maximize that area so you can have one length of field if it's turned one way. If you turn it the other way and strike it in a different manner, it would be wider and be able to use for a different use to try to really capture as much of that area as possible. <clears throat> we also have maintenance facilities there for Kevin and his folks to keep equipment, a place where they can work on equipment that is going to meet the same type of motif as the rest of the buildings. Uh, we've tried to use as much green space as possible and again we will be sharing uh, stormwater planning and such with the overall site <coughs> and I don't know how much more detail I need to get into at that point. I guess I could open Could you question. tell some more, uh, probably from my knowledge too, how much public charrette input we had to just get this process started? We had three different, we call them design charrettes, which is a fancy word for people getting together in one room and giving out their ideas. So we had, I'd say there were eight different iterations of how many soccer fields, how many baseball fields, how many softball fields. One group came in, all of them wanted all soccer fields. And so we, we fielded their concerns, requests, explained to them and what we were trying to do. The next night, we had all baseball people come in. And so after several iterations and explaining why we needed to be flexible, why we needed to make sure that there was something for all the kids, and this project really was about the kids, then we came <coughs> to a, a pretty good balance. Kevin feels like this is something that he can use based on his years of experience of what type of activities happen here, how things are kind of changing a little bit to what kind of competitions and things like that, whether this could be used for uh, revenue generation at some point. I think it, it gives the town a good canvas to do a lot of different things and be able to evolve as things change. Soccer will get more more popular, less popular. Baseball more popular, less popular. And so I mean, somebody's running my machine for me. <laughs> okay, I already know what happened. <laughs> Okay. So, so soccer people, they zoomed in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're over here. <laughs> I'll go back to the drawing. That's right. Yeah, bewitched. <laughs> uh, and also, I, I, I did leave out the splash pad, which is planned for right here. A little higher. That's the playground. I'm sorry. Yeah, splash, pad. splash pad here, central to the soccer fields, and this is a concession for the soccer and the playground area here. So really a, a multi-use facility in all respects. Uh, so share the entrance with the, the Food City development here. And so, oh, is it not my computer? <laughs> that's kind of an overall, uh, that's, that's a lot of information that I squeezed into a little bit of time. I've got the printout so that, that, that you folks can look a little closer at all of that. And we are 95% complete with design. So at this point, we've generated what we consider to be takeoff quantity cost estimates, which means I can actually get into each plan sheet, measure actual feet of field, feet of fence, how much units we need for, for the concession stand and all of those and so we're at a point now where the, the cost estimate is getting pretty close and as we work with Food City we're trying to figure out where we're going to land final elevation and what that means is if you can imagine what that contour of this looks like based on what material they have left rock soil otherwise the whole thing may move up or down a couple of feet, but it's still going to be relative to what we need on the site. <clears throat> Obviously, we're not going to take all the any material off. We're not going to try to bring as much material on. Everybody gets the most cost-effective uh, cut fill product that we can get. Well, while Stevie gets some other files caught up there, I want to say that was a very nice segue to say these 
He's been working on the, his cost estimates, and they are construction uh, level cost estimates now. And to get some discussion started, I'm going to start off by saying that as we've gotten more precise numbers for this and other costs for this, the whole, the whole site have come together, such as the road project and some other uh, costs we've had for the whole Meadows, de Meadows development, that uh, unfortunately we have seen there's a disconnect. If we, uh, you'll see a cost estimate for the full build out of all the bells and whistles that are on that sheet right now. I mean, that's, that's more money than's going to be left after the road project is finished. So I'm glad that this group of our elected officials and recreation commission, our food city partners are all in the same room to help us sort out some things. Maybe how we can look at some ideas of trying to do some phasing, uh, maybe make some big decisions about lighting. Uh, there's some a couple options that we that we have staff and Stevie have, have looked at, and he can he can go over his cost estimate at least. Uh, I would just start by saying that none of these numbers. Uh, suggestions are we tied to? They're for, they're just to get the conversation started. If someone says, hey, "I think we should do this," uh, we're it's uh, put it out there. It's on the table. So, uh, with that uh, with that kind of downer being said, I'm going to now turn it back over to Stevie and let him kind of look at get through his cost estimate. Uh, if you have any questions, please. As any questions as you go through the different sub subcategories, just feel free to ask a question right then. Don't wait till the end. And, we get to the bottom. If you have a question in utilities or grading, let's let's ask it now. Or if we get to the, the field construction part, let's you know, mm -hmm. jump in that jump on that one also. So, Steve, can you uh, go back there yeah. and start looking at some of the yeah. uh, cost estimate for the construction construction cost estimate for the sports complex? So I'm gonna try to get this. But I say we have a really I mean, everything else, pretty much everything else for the whole Meadows development that. Uh, the road project and all the other things that we've had to be responsible for this from a town standpoint uh, we have a very good firm contractual number for those so those costs are pretty well set the only outstanding cost is the is the sports complex that's the only really thing that's not was really the only thing that's not under contract right now and that's what that's what we're working towards now so what i put together is matt discussed a cost to, to see exactly what you see on this paper, full build out, 100%, maybe not every single tree exactly where it is, but you're, that's what we consider to be a turnkey. And so when we get to the bottom of the column, the turnkey construction for that, a little over seven and a half million dollars, what I have worked with staff to, to do is generate what we are calling grant dollars available to go towards the project. Those would include money that would be donated for the splash pad, which is a real discussion that's, that's been had. There's a little under half a million dollars in recreational access funding that we've been told by VDOT is low hanging fruit. As soon as we can get that finalized and application in, that's money that goes towards that. Um, Mr. Bidden, Mr. Bidden brought some ideas to the plate that we've done back in our hometown with school board sponsorship by Pepsi, Coca-Cola. <clears throat> There's a few other things here and there that we have, have earmarked conservatively to the tune of almost 700,000 bucks that could be made available to offset the 7.589 million, which puts phase one in the realm of, of 6.8, 6.9 million dollars. I would be clear also, I mean, the, that's phase one. Turnkey for everything that's built out there would be that 9.5 9 million. Yeah, yeah. 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 so I need everybody excited. Yeah. So the, let's, let's, uh, the turnkey is 8.8. <coughs> that was a, a one column over. So 8.8 is turnkey everything you see. That includes the 721 that I just talked about. Now what we worked with Kevin and some of the other folks before everybody got in the room was to come to the plate. <clears throat> if the bidding climate is aggressive, then this 6.8 number is, there's a good chance, or this 8.8 .8 number, there's a good chance that that number is down closer to what the town has available to spend. If that bidding, if the bidding climate is not aggressive when we bid it, and I'm not going to 
cherry code anything, the bidding climate over the last two years has changed enormously to the point that we've got things coming in as much as 30% over. There's more work out there than there are contractors to do it, and it's their heyday right now. But we're hearing that some of that is starting to clear up. First part, middle of the year, we're, we've got contractors already calling in saying we would like, you know, what's your next few projects coming up down the pipe because our backlog is starting to shrink a little bit. So that's going to ebb and flow based on the amount of work that's out there in the community. If I'm low bidder for very many projects, then I don't work for the town of Abbott anymore. So that's not good for me. I can't be the low price because I don't get to build it for you guys. So there is some contingency built into this. For that reason, what we're here today to figure out is, one, if 8.862 is everything on the page, what does the town have in the bank account right now? And what is the appetite for spending more than that, if that's not even an option, then we need to have a backup plan. When I put bid documents out that give us a project that can be built and numbers for the pieces that are over so that there is a fixed known amount of money that may be needed to build the whole thing. For instance, if the, ba if the base bid price includes all but two fields, those two fields will also be in the bid form and you'll get a price for them. If the base bid without those fields comes in at the, at the cost the town wants to spend, they know how much more they would have to spend to get two more fields. You can't do it the opposite direction. You can't ask for a price for the whole thing and then go back and try to negotiate little pieces that you'll never get your full value for that. You've got to get what I call a menu of options, so everybody involved, if there's a, enough money that you're short one field and you want to go out and try to find donations to, to finance the rest of that field. You can't get a donation if you can't ask them what you need. So we've got to define what each of these pieces are. So for instance, let me go into the option that got us to the 6.8. You'll see all these yellow areas. And let me preface this by saying that there, there is no option that we're going to look at that doesn't include grading, all the conduit for the lights, all of the drainage, all the water lines. Everything's got to be buried. Regardless of whether you build all the fields or not, that needs to go in with the first phase. All of that's got to be done. You don't want to go back and tear up anything later to go back and put utilities in the ground. So for instance, this phase, and again, as Matt mentioned, this is just us throwing an idea out there to see how everybody feels about it. The, we would propose not building one of the baseball fields, and that would be this field, field, six. field six. Field six. So I'll just use this to show the, the mapping piece, and then I'll go back and show the numbers and make that up. So we would propose as an option, this would be an add alternate. This field, which is a practice slash multi-purpose field, would be an add alternate. And what I mean by that is they would price building all three of these fields out, parking lots, roads, sidewalks, drainage. And then under that price would be price to build field six. And it would have its own line item number, whether that's $300,000, whether that's $250,000. And they would say, okay, and now give me a price to build field seven. That would be the next line item. We've also talked about not building one of the soccer fields immediately, possibly. That would have its own line item. So if you look at those, you take those out. We also looked at some things like the bleachers, only doing uh, a, a few of the bleachers that are mobile, movable. We could cut some costs there because we'll have a per bleacher item. So we can only entertain as many bleachers as they want to. Um, the batting cage and the softball team storage, we had talked about having some on-site storage. But Kevin says, you know, a lot of the folks that come to the facility, they're going to have their equipment. They're going to have their stuff with them. Would a batting cage be nice on-site? It would, but again, 
you build the facility, maybe you get some donors, maybe you find some, some ways to, to generate that money, the batting cage can come after the fact. Uh, some other things that may be phased in, the playground for instance. If that's something that we want to try to go after some funding uh, to build that, the, the location of the playground would already be ready, it'd be graded, it'd have grass on it. But uh, that may be something that can be done later. So with those adult options, you can see how quickly you get down $2 million less than the, the full bailout. Now what that looks like from a mapping standpoint, this is still going to be at the right grade and it's going to have to have grass on it. It's just not going to have the <coughs> drainage gra uh, um, level of soil on it. It's not going to have the sod rolled out on it. There will be some things that aren't built out, but the, the path is going to be there. So. And Kevin and I were talking, if it's not the most fantastic field, you're still, if you want to throw some lines on it, the, the area is going to be there. The same thing for this field down here. It's not going to be, a, I mean, you got to imagine it's not going to be a pad of clay. You're going to have grass there. It's not going to drain as well as, as the built, totally built out field, but it's going to be at grade and it's going to be there. The same with this baseball field. And so I'm not trying to, to cherry coat that. What I'm saying is this option, if everybody's okay with maybe having a menu that sets you up for success, and what I mean by that, what we can't do, and the reason I'm sitting here, I've been in, I've done this for 20 years, and I've seen it all the time. Everybody gets excited. These pictures are as dangerously bad as they are good. So it gets everybody excited. They get all pumped up. Nobody ever puts a number on each one of those. So every time he tells them, yeah, that looks good. I like that. Go home. Every time somebody else sees it, this is what's going in. How much is that going to cost? I don't know, man, but those, that looks good. That looks good. <laughs> so that's, that's the danger. So what my job, outside party looking in, I keep you guys from injuring yourself by saying, all this is, it is, it's great. And it will, at some point, you can get there. You may not be able to get there as quickly as you want to, but I have got to give you a base bid project and add alternates so that when a contractor gives you a number, you're able to sit down and pick a project that you're happy with for the money you want to spend without having to rebid it, without having to go and sit down in a room and, and negotiate with them after the fact. You can't survive in that world. So my job is to tell you, you need to pick a number that you feel comfortable. That's what I am going to put the base bid set for so that when you get a bid in, you've got a project you can pull the trigger and you can build it. <coughs> have your options to add to what will already work functionally or not at the immediate time. I, and that's that'll be totally up to the the boards and the committees and how aggressively you want to spend money. If you get smoking good numbers, it looks like you've only got to throw in a couple hundred thousand dollars to get the whole thing right now. I'm probably going to be pretty honest with you and tell you you're probably not going to be able to do it as cheap as this again. But time will tell when the bids come in, and uh, at the bidding climate may change everything. But this is a big enough project that what I can't afford to do is have you open bids and say, well, none of these numbers work for us. What do we do now? I guess you're going to hire another engineer to take <laughs> very good care of you. So I've got to manage this so that you have a project that you meet your budget, gives you something that's usable, that you're proud of, and that it's planned so that you don't tear up stuff later. You're just adding on seamlessly because everything else is in the ground. So that's, let me go back to these numbers because that's the picture that keeps getting everybody. So here's, here is really, and I'm going to turn it over to the numbers folks, I guess at this point, but where we're sitting is right now as the picture stands, if you don't find any of this money that we're, that we're, we're considering to be grant, that's the project with the grant, 8.8, with some of the things as structured as add alternates to do later. 
We're looking at seven and a half with some grant money, 6.8. Phase two, to add those on later, the things that I took off of phase one, that's around 2.3. So when the bids come in, what in a perfect world, if this 2.3 existed at all, it would be broken down into menu options that you could say, do we want to add the fourth baseball field right now? That's 300,000 bucks. It's more important that we add another soccer field right now. Kevin and I even talked about it may not be a terrible thing even if you had the money to kind of see how the first year goes and what activity actually happens on that site before you go and build out and wish you would have built something other than what you put in the ground because the activities hadn't even happened yet. So again, there's pros and cons to the whole process. I would just like to add in that the grant money does include the money from Rotary. They've you know, been very active about you know, sponsoring the splash pad. Uh, they feel confident they can uh, donate approximately $100,000 for that splash, for any uh, splash pad design that we have. They want to be very active in that. I've got a binder about this thick of ideas they have uh, for, for the splash pad ideas. So it's, that, that's included in the grant money. That also includes VDOT money and then just a very conservative estimate of what we think we might be able to get for some other uh, private sponsorship. I think if we're aggressive, we could find find more sponsorship sponsorship opportunities. Uh, before we get too far in discussion, the only thing I'd like to point out about this is one thing that's really another outstanding question is how much do we want to, uh, what do we want to do and how much money do we want to spend on the existing White House? This this has, if you scroll up to, so it just, just this just has Kind of making it so it's not such an eyesore. Uh, painting, uh, landscaping, uh, just a few a few things there at the existing white house. If that once that decision is made, maybe those numbers change. Maybe we say, well, let's not spend any money on the white house now. Do we know what we want to do? Or we know what we want to do. Let's find the money to to do what we want to do. That's uh, I hate to you know, keep throwing questions, but these are these are things we need to sooner we address these. These questions, you know, better off everybody will be. That's, that's really all I have. Mr. Vitter or Chuck, you want to add on? <laughs> uh, for those who haven't met me yet, um, Ken Vitter, I'm serving as uh, the interim town manager. Uh, be here until sometime in the spring. Uh, what I've spent the last couple of weeks is trying to get a handle on the project financing piece. Um, there's two major projects going on and I think that it was kind of uh, communications on what was needed for each piece was lacking. Uh, the good news is that the uh, Green Springs Road is all under contra contract now so we are pretty sure of the dollars that are going to be needed to complete that project. Uh, the sports complex, and tell me if I'm wrong, Stevie, but I think everything is a known quantity at this stage except for the construction contract. So until we go to contract, uh, go to bid, um, that's going to be uh, a best guess, guess estimate from uh, <coughs> CHA. Uh, separating the two projects out has been a bit of a chore, but uh, uh, it quickly became apparent that uh, uh, the two added up to more than the town had uh, uh, gotten the loan for, uh, the bonding issue for. So um, what we're trying now to do is look at how much of a shortfall there is and what are the options for uh, being able to close it <coughs> and complete the project. Anything you want to add, Chuck? Uh, looking at his estimates on, for, as far as the phasing approach, you're getting close to the neighborhood of where you where you need to be. And I know Mr. Bill made made me aware of some funding that I wasn't I didn't know about. I just know what's in the line of credit. 
so you're getting close to that $6.8 million figure that you see there. Uh, and that's, you know, that's building in the, uh, uh, the, the things that might be no donated, the VDOT monies, the, the rotary stepping up and doing the splash pad, and that 6.8. So you're getting close to, I mean, you're, you're right in the ballpark of being able to fund, uh, as Steve called it, the first phase with what we have right now sitting in the line of credit. Access grant <clears throat> provides is access to the recreational facility. So, what they will pay for is the road access all the way into both parking lots, and they'll pay for a 10 foot wide path all the way through, around, and back in. So, they would they'll pay for what would be a road loop through that parking lot, they just won't pay for all the parking spaces. So they'll do that on this end, and then also on this end. So we'll give them X linear feet of 24 foot wide lane width and, and, and length, and that's what they'll cover. And then the project will have to pay for the parking. So typically, VDOT will not let you do add alternates. So you have to separate that out and bid it separately. This would have the, the access and the parking would have to be the base bid in the base bid. Okay. As in, there's no splitting that up. You can't, if you don't have enough money to build the road and the parking lot, we're in big trouble. So <laughs> we've got to at least build that. So it would be, you're right, they won't do, and if you do add all to B dot money, you have to engage them in the order in which they are shown on the bid form too. So if you had alternative three that included some of this parking, you'd have to do one and two before you, you couldn't just jump to three. Mr. Steele, would you show us one more time what VDOT would be paying for the coming in to the facility? I saw that, but I didn't see. You so see coming that. in, yeah, you see that right? So coming in mm -hmm. to the entrance of each parking lot, they pay for all of this, and then a 24 foot wide piece of asphalt that goes through and loops around and comes back. Okay. So they wouldn't, if you didn't have any parking there, they would pay for you to have access to this field and come back. The same thing for down here, they'll pay for you to go through the parking lot and come back. But the actual parking spaces themselves, that asphalt would have to be part of the town funded project. So when I send them the application, there'll be a highlighted <coughs> path through these two parking lots to correspond to the square feet of asphalt that we're asking VDOT to make part of the recreational access grant fund. Steve, how about the little parking lot there? We, we haven't mentioned that one. Mm -hmm. That little uh, 32 space parking lot. Oh, we, we can loop through there too. Can there, that's a good call. Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the, the good news about how that money works up to $250,000 of that is grant money. You can do additional beyond that at the 50 50 match as long as it's not other state or federal money. And so every penny that the town is spending can be considered match. I mean, I can make it a real clean match. I can say what we spend on the rest of the parking lot matches what we're asking for for the, the, the road access portion. So again, that may be a conservative number, but everybody's happy when you come back with more, not less. Is there a walking trail in an ad alternate? I didn't hear you mention that. Maybe I missed it. No, sir. 
right now. And what again, I threw that. This is just <coughs> some conversation with staff. That is considered to be in the base bid, the walking trail. What kind of what? surface will the walking trail have? And it varies through the site. Part of it's concrete sidewalk and part of it's uh, a match of a creeper trail. You see the layer in there at the top where it comes back into the sidewalk. What is the thinking behind that? I thought we started out as a sports complex. What is the thinking about not making that an add-on? I've just heard the uh, a lot of people say they really want a walking trail. That seems to be something, okay. that's something that's pretty, that's just, and it'll feedback. <laughs> What's the walking trail? 51,000 bucks. 51,000. Not very much money. Uh, why is field number seven an ad alternate? That looks like it'd be hard to construct that after the investor, after the base bill is built. Well, field seven, one of the reasons it's attractive for that to be an add all is there's a triangular piece of property down here in the far corner mm -hmm. that is still in question as to whether or not it can be acquired, whether it be usable. If that was at some point made available, then what can be placed in this area is much different than what I'm showing right now. I'm constricted to, to some extent. I would hate to go ahead and build this out and find out that this property becomes available and you could have put another baseball field down there. Well, the, the other part of my question is, will it be difficult to construct that after the rest of it to build? Uh, we, <coughs> we've got access, we've got some access around this side. This is the maintenance building here at the bottom part of this parking lot. Yeah. And so there will be access to be able to maintain the trail and backside of these fields and things of that nature so okay as far as getting equipment in there we won't landlock ourselves okay. into that and the final grade is going to be completed back here so there won't be any major earthwork needed and i guess the, the sprinkler lines and everything will be in there the conduit, the conduit all of the lines for the irrigation mm -hmm. everything buried before we pull the, the equipment out okay Field six down also in that corner, which is H or field six. We you know, we were looking at just trying to cut a little while ago trying to come up with some additional numbers. And if we don't finish out that one field and we don't finish out H, then what we would do with field four is not make that a grassed infield. Leave that as a skinned infield for now so that way you can play a sixty foot base pad, you can play a ninety foot base pad, you can put a temporary fence out there, makes it still multi purpose, just like Latcher Field sets right now. Then, if it, can we come back in in the second phase and you put in field six, then you have the ability to go back in and you still put, you, you can go back and, and put a, a, you know, a, a soldered infield back on field four and have everything just as, as you see it on the, on the map. I remember from the uh, planning commission meeting there were some alternatives involved in the appearance of the structures here. Uh, have those been taken into account for those part of the They have not. Alternatives? They have not been taken into account. This includes the more expensive design of the structures. <coughs> and I do not have a estimate of what that change would be. Uh, going from uh, Dave Barlow had some, mm -hmm. some alternate plans for the structures of less brick, more vinyl. Right. And they were approved by the planning commissions. We, we would have the opportunity to, to change some elevations on the two buildings, the J and, and the I. And I think that would be another great opportunity to price them both ways. Because we're already going to get numbers. Yeah. If you price brick and tell them, well, it's a little more than we want how much would you take off for vinyl, they'll give you about 30% of what they would if they had to actually write it down in the bid. So everything you want priced, we need to make sure there's a separate bid item for that and they've got to sharpen their pencil to give it to you then. Because they play and then the contractors, they 
they build a lot of the stuff that we enjoy and they take a lot of risks but they will build profit into certain line items and if you try to take that away from them then they will they will work to the end of time to try to get it back in other line items unless you get them to put it in the in writing in the bid. Well, I think as long as we're talking about adding an alternate, so that'll be part of the change on the very good structures on the part. That's very good. Don't make any changes. <clears throat> Would you clarify how many? Fields for each sport are included in the first the proposal for the first phase. First phase would include one soccer field and three baseball fields. Again, that is not set in stone. That is a conversation, not with this many people in the room. So, is that field one or field two? That's the I think Kevin, we talked about field two would be the one that stays. When you're talking about lighting and all that, I mean, you were talking about trying to connect everything in one area. You could build field one with parking and all of that. Again, we're mm -hmm. talking about ad alternates with lighting, and I mean, there's the idea, I guess, was trying to get to a number. If the number comes in right and bidders and the contractors bid it well, then all of a sudden a lot of things come back onto the table. And that's why we keep talking about that alternates. It's the idea is get everything we can. Um, there may be some other monies come available as the project develops. And when that happens, then, uh, you know, even when they're, you know, everything will be built out. So, I mean, I, I, you know, for the most part, it's going to be, you know, there still will be rectangle space there. It just won't have the, and it'll still have irrigation, it'll still have all the other components in place. It just won't have the lighting put up on it at this point, but the lighting would be there to come back and add the lighting back to. Um, the same way with the baseball fields as well. I mean, everything will be put in place. It's still, be a, it's still going to be a practice, you know, there will still be a place for people to get out on that grass field. It just may not have the same drainage in place, and, and, and which will be something that would be added in to, the, to a final field construction. The Still reusable space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much. So is any of the lighting part of the base bid? Yes. Just for those, those three baseball fields and that one soccer field? Just the three baseball fields is what we've got right now. <clears throat> Do you have any estimates of what the money that's being spent for support? Break down by what's being spent on baseball and what's being spent on What was the, I saw a number on there, the, the, was it the 1.2 with the baseball fields and 200 some? Was that not the, the numbers on the fields? So you could break it up a on field, your, but you'd have to, you know, structures and parking lot and utilities, I mean, that would still, that would be well, yeah, I'm just saying, I, there was some there was some breakdown on the Excel the spreadsheet. I thought that that showed the cost. There's a per field cost. So a 350 foot baseball field, which is <clears throat> this field here that we're talking about keeping <coughs> the skin off, so it's multi-purpose. The cost for that is three hundred ninety thousand dollars. Multi-purpose field is two hundred nine thousand dollars. And is that the, are the multi-purpose fields any of the I guess what we call soccer fields? Correct. Okay. Is that field two? That is either of field these one. field one or two. Do you know when the geotechnical engineering consultant expects to the ground to be stable enough to begin construction of the fields? We'll be using um, monitors placed all over that site, as well I'm sure the Food City folks, it's a pretty standard geotechnical practice to make sure that the ground has finished settling before we do anything to that site. Whether they'll be gnashing of teeth or not, I will not allow something to be built that will settle, crack foundations or whatnot, if my PE seal is going to be the one on. So that will be monitored very closely. 
Uh, Matt and I have talked. Sometimes that happens as quickly as three months. Sometimes it takes longer than that. And we're monitoring every lift of soil and rock that goes in with somebody that the town's paying 24 seven. They're not paying them while they're sleeping, but if there's earth being moved, we have somebody watching <coughs> and testing to make sure it's being placed appropriately. I know at the beginning of the, uh, before you came into the engineering part of it to go over there on the field, there was some problems <coughs> with large rocks and then that got resolved. So mm -hmm. do you anticipate anything happening to that field in the future? Um, this is for public record. Um, to let the public know what was going on. I don't think all the public knew what was going on at that time. So could you kind of explain that and, and, and tell us what you did to remedy that? Well, we were brought in because there were, obviously the Food City folks had their own geotechnical engineer. That person was in charge of making sure that that site was prepared appropriately so their structures would be designed and, and act as they should. No settlement, no cracking, drainage would be correct. They were taking that material and they were going to place it where the sports complex was going to be. So we had to get together pretty quickly because those guys, rightly so, working for Food City, they under a very strict schedule, they've got to get as much material off of that site as they can. And they got somebody watching them to make sure that that's being done appropriately. <coughs> Not so much on our site, and it's from the outside looking in, eh, it's a sports field, what's the big deal? It's, you know, you ought to be able to just put it in there as fast as you can. And we all agree that that wasn't the case, and some of those layers are going to have over 20 feet of field. So uh, we had to get together. My geotech, the city's geotech, met. We came to an agreement on what was the appropriate way to handle <coughs> the field material. And I'll tell you right now that that material is, is challenging. It is very challenging. It's uh, undulating rock, and in each of those low undulations, there's water sitting in clay. When they shoot the rock, it energizes the soil with water. The moisture content tends skyrockets. When they take it out of there, it's a big, mud pile well, then they've got to spread it out based on what we agree and let it dry the bigger rocks they've got to figure out how to get rid of those without busting them all the way down to the size of a golf ball so using standard geotechnical practice we agreed on a method that would allow them to place larger stones with the correct compaction around them in areas where there would not be any structures. Again, I mentioned this earlier, they have the, the location of each of these buildings built into their equipment. So as they drive over where the concession stand is going to be, they know they can't place large boulders in that area because the compaction test for that area is different than for an area in the middle of a ball field. So working with them to make sure, again, everybody's working as efficiently as we can. There is a different geotechnical field requirement for in the middle of a field than there is for underneath of a structure. All of that being tested to what two different geotechs have agreed to, their licensed professionals that are standing behind that. And we've had this <coughs> conversation several times and Food City has always been very good to work with. Sometimes when we're pushed up against the schedule, there's yelling, there's red faces because everybody's got to answer somebody at the end of the day. We always come to an agreement of what has to happen at a minimum before all the nerdy engineer people will sign off on it later. <coughs> and that's, that's where usually the rubber hits the road. So I'll say, Steve, I know we're a little bit behind, but if we can't do something to come to a happy middle, and I'm not going to tell the town they should build anything over there. There's a little powwow. These guys come out and say, all right, what can we do? We ebb and flow, and we, we may work. So I don't know if that answers the question, but those large boulders were stockpiled in the middle of the site so that they could be addressed at a later date. And 
been here, I don't know, a couple of, it's been a month ago, see, probably or more. Mm -hmm. They went to work on them and hammered them down to the right size, and it took a long time to do that. And they would have rather not, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but again, it is. It's a, that site doesn't work without the Food City and vice versa. I mean, it, it is a, I mean, it's a, the whole master plan, they, they, it's got to all come together. So if they don't want to prepare a base where people come to that location and say, yeah, my kid fell through a sinkhole and broke his leg, that doesn't work for anybody. So my job as the town representative is to be kind of a tough guy and say, I know that there's schedules and stuff, but when we reach a certain breaking point, that's when I've got to kind of say that's it. Other than that, we're going to keep ebbing and flowing and make sure I can sign off on everything. Project keeps moving. That's, that's how that geotech is gone. And I know a lot of people can see big rocks from the road, and there's, there's more to it than, than what you actually see. So there is somebody out there every minute that dirt's being moved that is not being paid by Food City, making sure that the geotechnical specifications are being adhered to. Well, I'm glad that that was taken care of and, and I'm glad that it's gonna be signed off on because that was one of my concerns and, and other citizens as well that um, that was going on, but it sounds like it's being taken care of. Well, we've got data reports that document what tests have been done, how much work was done, where the work was been done, uh, all that will be able to be checked on and documented. That's what I'll be signing off on. And the statement I make will be based on field inspection and reports completed. <coughs> to the best of my knowledge, the project was built to specifications. So. Okay, very good. Thank you. Without that exact breakdown of how much is being spent on different sports, um, it's hard to say, but I know it's a complicated process for one involved, but it seems like a lot more is <coughs> going to be spent on baseball than soccer. And I know you can't please everybody, but if we end up with three baseball fields and one soccer field, there's going to be a lot of people with their, their arms up and wondering how that, how that happened. Baseball's already got fields with lights. I don't think soccer has any. Soccer's had to beg, borrow, and <laughs> beg and borrow from the school board for participation's pretty for many years. Pretty even, I think. I don't think there's a discrepancy that way. Soccer's a two-season sport. I mean, it's there's a, there's a lot of kids that are that are playing, especially you know when you get into the fall time like we've had, but we have to really condense our season without any sort of lights, you know, and it makes it hard to practice. It makes it hard to do a lot of stuff. Just because we don't have, I mean, we have one small area really, where there's a lot of kids trying to run around. It's very congested. Mm -hmm. It's out there in the school board offices. Mr. Mayor, would would you mind if I spoke? No, go, go ahead, Steve. Let me <clears throat> let me just add a little something, and Stevie, you might correct me if I say something that you don't think's right. But you know, we've got a little experience operating in a, in a lot of other towns that. They've built sports complexes, and I mean they're building them almost everywhere. And there's a lot of private money that goes into most sports complexes. I think, and I'm, I'm going to speak fairly bluntly. I think if we come together as a community and as a town, and we decide that this is a plan that that everybody's behind, whether it's soccer folks, baseball folks, little league football folks, town council, business community. I think you really underestimate the amount of private money that you can that you can generate in, in this plan. Um, you know, I know Kingsport's building a special use uh, field down there right now, and I don't know that there's any town money going into that. It doesn't feel like it with the arm twist that's going on in Kingsport. Um, but it's for it's for youth that, that can't play on a regular field, and, and they, they, it's much needed, and they're doing a great job. But is a, is a, and sometimes I ought to keep my mouth shut, but I, I just know what's right, or at least what I believe is right. If you get the business community, the sports folks behind it, some folks from the town, you can approach business leaders, and over a 
two, three, five year period, you can get some pretty significant commitments to help fund some of your, your shortfalls. Um, there may be some sponsorship offers out there that may intrigue people, and some people don't are not interested in that. Some people will just make some private donations and don't even want to be noticed. But I do think that if, if you get the right people together, uh, you can come up with some significant amount of, amount of money and hopefully meet everybody. Will meet you everybody. help us to know who the right people are, Steve? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you said that, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith because in, in all reality, when, when the original town council borrowed the $10 million, um, we were supposed to put in around, you know, like a million or a couple million on these four houses that are falling down nearly in Abing and the, the um, historical houses. So we're going to have to have some money for that. So if we could get some good donations, I think that is an excellent idea. Well, Ms. Patterson, I don't, I don't know that my recollection was uh, the historic houses were anything of the 10 million. I think the 10 million was really for the sports complex. But I, I understand that the historic houses have their own needs. But I, I'd be careful, this my opinion, be careful not to muddy the water when you're asking people to support something. I think you need to be very specific and, and say, you know, this is for the kids here. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go out and raise money for the historic houses, I, I'll leave that up to y'all. But I, I, I'm talking about the sports complexes. And, uh, I, you know, having lived here most of my adult life, I mean, I think we all understand the need that the kids have. Businesses have to recruit people to come here, so we know that people make business decisions based on what's good for their kids, family decisions based on what's good for their kids. And I have a lot of my people that decide to live in Bristol or Kingsport because their kids have more recreation. That's tax dollars we lose here in Abington. And I can assure you that the hospital or other businesses here have the same opportunities. So I, I, I stood up because I'll be one of the ones that helps you raise the money, but it's got to be everybody working together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that excites me. I love your plan here, and I, I just, like I say, we're energetic about making sure it happens. And thank you again, Mr. Smith. And just to be clear, it is in the minutes, in, in the town council minutes, that where they were breaking it down for the historical property. So thank you for that information, and I'm sure that we'll all be looking into that. My other question is, is this complex for our children? Who is this complex for? This question has been asked for several years. I hope it's for our kids, county and the town. Um, you know, I'm not opposed to having um, uh, tournaments there as well to bring in revenue, but I would like to know who we're building this for. I'd like to speak to that a little bit since I've been here uh, the direction I've always gotten from elected officials and town administration has been that this is first a field for the uh, Abingdon the citizens. Uh, it's not designed. It's not. It's not. It's not meant to be designed for tournament play. Tournaments can be hosted here. That's great. But the field. That's why it was changed to a. <coughs> uh, I can't remember what it was titled to start with, but that's why it was this exhibit was changed to a multi-use sports complex. We would have the most flexibility to. Do what we need to do on these fields for the kids that live in Abingdon. Well, you mean in the Abingdon area, right? Well, yes, sir. So it's, uh, you know, again, I'm not a sports complex expert by any means, but if you're if you're looking for a more of a tournament field, you have four identical fields, and that was one of the first changes that was made in, since I was here okay. about the different field size and sizes and meeting different needs of. Different age baseball players, softball players, adult men, uh, trying to get as many people as possible to use these these uh, fields and baseball fields and soccer fields. Soccer fields are sized for gosh, lacrosse, mm -hmm. uh, peewee football. Uh, so everything has been every decision has been predicated on maximum flexibility for local use. <coughs> not uh, not to attract mm -hmm. tournaments. That's great if, we, if, if they can be hosted here. That's, you know, we don't want to preclude that, but that's not the decision maker. If the scheduling allows, because that's the whole point. The that's scheduling is, is up to know. But I know that everybody does their best, but because of the limited sports fields that we have, we need them. So I 
Gotcha. From my, from my two cents, I, I think we should rally around this plan right here and, and try to build it. That's my two cents. So kind of a more specific question coming from the Rec Advisory Committee. Um, one of the things we were talking about at our last meeting was with the current plan, with the type of turf we're using, how long do we have to wait to play on it? Like once it's actually rolled out, just kind of... That's something I know nothing about. That's why I'm asking that question. Well, and I'm, I'm going to read. I had, I made sure my grass person gave me specifics. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is a, a real thing. Any golf course or football field is real turf and watch the guys in charge of that. Losing sleep every night, worried about some kind of a balloon coming out or something like that. So um, the question that the staff asked me that what brought this about was whether or not we could save money by doing traditional seeding versus putting down turf. And I wanted to make sure I had the timelines right because I think Kevin and I both talked about how long you might have to wait in order to get on the field one, if you did traditional seeding, and secondly, even if you kept that in the contractor's contract, that he had to watch it like a hog for an entire year. Even with all of that, let's see here. You're going to. I can tell you the seeding is two growing seasons before you can get on it. I have no idea about some of it. It was 12 months. It was 12 months for traditional seed is what, before you could get on. Okay. And I think it was six to eight weeks. So we, we've got turf, turf in the base bed, right? Turf. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that, that, that turf. Base bed's so, turf, that, yes. <laughs> there's just, there's not enough, <laughs> there's not enough savings in going away from the turf right. to make any sense. It, 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 you're not going to get it. You're going to, you're going to punish yourself, and it's going to be something you live with forever for 100,000 100, bucks total, 20,000 a piece. It's just not, it's not where the savings is. If you're going to cut something, that's not. I wouldn't cut irrigation. I wouldn't cut putting the right grass down first. I wouldn't cut not putting all the utility pipes in the ground first. I wouldn't cut putting the right drainage in first. All of that stuff, you go back and having to keep trying to pick that up, it increases your maintenance cost, it makes the fields not maintainable as much. Uh, you get this big facility up there and you can't keep the grass growing, and you can't keep water off of it. Somebody should find whoever signed that thing, the plans, me, and say what in the world, what are you doing? I mean, we can build a, a $500,000 facility out there right now. Take some, just all of us get a bale of straw, we'll start seeding it out there, and start mowing and try to keep it alive, and water will stand on it, and the grass will die when it gets hot, and the kids will run on it for two days in a row, and it'll kill the whole thing off. I mean, this is, it's a, it's a business. It is something that's got to be done right if you're really going to try to have a lot of traffic on it. As I understand it, it's 14 days at 54 degrees for a seed to germinate. Has to be above 54 degrees. Mm -hmm. So seeding right now would be futile. <laughs> it's two seasons. I mean, it's pretty over a 12 month period of time. You're going to lose two years versus uh, four to six weeks. And I'm, I'm all, I don't multitask well, so you let me just look now. I think it was clear that it's the the cost of time was not worth the correct the potential savings. So yeah. basically, with the turf rolling out, we're looking a couple of months at the max. Yeah, so just the six months. That's right. Well, can I make a comment? Sure. I'm, I'm Scott Wilson. I'm chair of the Rec Commission, and I just want to comment um, on a gentleman that was talking about the soccer versus baseball. Um, if you look at it as a snapshot of now, it does seem uh, like there's inequality. We're, we're doing baseball and not soccer. 
but uh, for me, when my kids were little 20 years ago, we didn't, there was no soccer, there was nothing. It was very difficult. And, and we came and begged town council and the board of supervisors, let's build a sports complex. Let's build a sports complex. I did presentations, you know, on places where you could build one. And to me, this is this is like the culmination of a dream. So so that the other two soccer fields are like within grasp. So to me, on the big picture, it doesn't really bother me that much. You know, that it seems to be inequality now because because big picture, it's coming and it will happen and we will have soccer. And I think another thing to point out is these big fields, actually for youth, you can do like two games on one field, I believe, right? So, so it's not it's not quite as small as. as what do we do? They should run the soccer sideways yeah. on the field. So to, mm -hmm. no. you can't run two fields on one field that size. I mean, maybe I guess you could if you were playing two under six. Uh, when my kids were little, they they'd take the football field at the high school and run it the run it perpendicular to them. But common. if you're if you're doing, I mean, can you can't do that for under ten or under eight? They're two hundred and ten feet by three hundred and sixty feet. Is what the multi-purpose field is. Seven by. And that's an opportunity maybe that that field seven. Uh, maybe it needs to be. Designed better for younger kids and have two fields down in the field seven area mm -hmm. that are specifically designed for younger younger soccer players. And again, the bid alternate I, 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 decisions that they are not set in stone. We have the four the, the three fields in the base field, the three <coughs> baseball fields in the base bid, field six and a soccer field in the adult. Or we have two baseball fields in the base bid and some adult options. When the bids come in, the money will go as far as it'll go. And then if you have options, then I don't know how long you want to put it off, but the decision on soccer field now, baseball field now, that's still it's still at your discretion. So I just need some direction from the town on how to structure the bid that I will send out to the contractors to get a quote. I can structure it any way that the town wants to. My only request and suggestion is that we don't take anything out that has to be done for the whole site. That at a minimum, that stuff stays in the basement. Piping, the grade, the drainage, the asphalt, the parking. And like, like stuff like saying we'll do one parking lot in asphalt and the other one in gravel to and afford to pave it. Yeah, it's, that is not the most efficient way to do it and you will never get as good a price as you can for a guy going out and doing the other half at some point in the, in, in the future. In a perfect world that this bid would be in about, I would have five, six months. Mm -hmm. Late spring next year would be the time we're going out to be it. So these that's the kind of time frame we're talking about getting some of these decisions made. Well, a little bit less than that, so he has enough time to do his paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. I yeah, need you, need, you need what, two days for that? A day and a half. All right, there you go. That's I recorded. Need, excuse me. <laughs> I need guidance from you all what the what you want from the council. Uh, it's, it's, I understand it's entirely within staff prerogative to decide on bid alternates and things like that. Uh, do, do you want us to make a decision and if so, uh, give us a time frame? I think one of the things that it looks as though there is a funding gap between available funding and the price, particularly to do the entire uh, field. And based on what Mr. Smith was saying, I think that uh, Council working with him and establishing a committee that would look at trying to access some of the private funding that he indicated would be available. And, and I agree with him that in many cases it is a uh, significant portion of the budget. But I don't think, Ken, that we're going to get that. If I, I would be not be optimistic that we get that information 
prior to the time they need to put this out to bid. So uh, that's the kind of a question that I'm asking. Right. When, when, do, when do we need to know what the alternates are? Uh, if, if that's a council decision, and I don't think it is, but if you want us to make that decision, we, we, I need a, a time frame. I would, I would think that doing it as, as you were talking about with the all ads would make sense anyways because hopefully you're 20 percent high. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be 20 percent low. Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 20 percent high is the right answer. Right. 20 percent high. For me, it helps staff come to a conclusion. The thing I need to know is what amount of money do I need to plan the base bid to come in? Is that exactly what the town has in left in that budget? If so, then I can work backwards. Well, from what I understand, we've got we've got ten million dollars to work with for the two projects combined. And I think your six point eight number is is what I would say that that's what we've got to work with. Okay. So, so to your point, just so I'm kind of, you talking about the base bid, Steve, you're saying if the bid comes in at that number, whatever that base bid is, we should be, the council should be ready to say, yeah, go. We go the money, go. Pull the trigger. And, and so Mr. Craig, you're saying 6.8 is that level yeah. of that. Okay. So when I give the town staff options, if that's how this meeting ends up terminating, my options will all be based on the fact that the base bid is priced to hit that 6.8 mark. And the only decision that I've heard that needs to be made, uh, uh, that anybody's expressed, is whether how many soccer fields and how many baseball fields. And uh, uh, I'm asking you, do we need to make that decision tonight, or who's going to make that decision? I don't, I don't feel it needs to be made tonight, but Tom Furl does say okay. that. <laughs> I, would, I would think as, as he puts the bid together that he would put them in as uh, alternates so that if there's additional funding available, you'd add them in uh, to the base bid. Uh, if, you know, if the bid's come in lower than, than the budget, you may be able to add a field back in. That, uh, okay. So uh, what, what I'm hearing is you'll let us know when we need to place it on the agenda for any decision town council needs to make. Okay. And maybe work with the uh, recreation committee to prioritize uh, those items. We'll have another question um, for the council and the citizens of Abingdon. Do we know if there's done it, if there has been any formula analysis of how much it's going to cost um, for each year of expenditure? Once the sports field complex have been, has been built, according, I know it's going to do, if it's, it's going to be different because we don't know what fields we're going to have in there exactly. But has there been an analysis yet? Um, I have not seen anything there. As, as I said, I spent the last couple of weeks trying to pull numbers apart and, and see how much money was available. Well, maybe to decide how many fields and all. We need to know how much money we're going to be up against uh, owing each year for expenditures. That would probably be a good idea, wouldn't it? To know what we're going to spend. I know there's some, some beginning thought process to figure out a yearly operation and maintenance budget for, for this sport, sports complex. Manpower, equipment, seed. I, I, it's, there's, I, know that, I, know that, I know that process has started. But I don't think we're at a point where we can say it's going to cost X amount of dollars for each year to run this. Well, can we get that before we make a decision on how many fields and all we're going to have? Don't you think that put the cart, put the horse before the cart, in other words? Well, we're not going to actually award these bids until uh, spring. Uh, yeah, in probably May. Your, your best guess is March, April, for time frame for putting it out for bids. And certainly, certainly we could have that information by then. We, we've talked about this for two or three months now. So. Well, let's put it out for the public to see as well, because after all, that's who's going to be paying for this. My firm, my firm has a lot of expertise in how much it costs to run different size facilities from New York all the way down into Florida. So 
we can certainly provide some guidance with Kevin and his staff. There's a lot of stuff already in place, so it's not like this is a add-on and everything's got to be staffed up. So there'll be some some variations in that cost, but I mean, we can spend some time putting those numbers together and then be able to tell you that historically and proof in other locations this is what they're spending for facilities of this size so you know that it's a real number not just something that has been conjured up. And the first full fiscal year this park will be open would be 2021. This year is 2020 to 2021 will be the first full fiscal year if my math is right. But to this point is before we award a contract and commit ourselves to this expenditure that we need to know that we've got the money not only to build it but to maintain it. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was to this level, Chuck, but didn't Davenport's calculations on the bond issue include that yes. type of information? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they, they had uh, estimates of the cost of that. They had the estimates for the revenue that was going to cost to maintain it through through the through the use. Now, where their numbers come from, I'm not, I'm not, okay. I'm not aware of them. But in the built in the tax revenues that they were for the real estate taxes, the meals and lodging taxes, uh, those type of taxes, it was it was cost it was part of that cost estimate on you know your fifty remember the fifty to seventy five and the ninety percent. It, it was part of that, so it kind of gives you an idea. Since your company is you know more of an expert, I don't know where those figures exactly came from. Can you help us with that? Yeah, we can come up with a number and then they can sanity check it against what Davenport came up with so you've got a check and balance number. Yeah, because it would be good for kind of a third party to look at. It's not a heavy lift for us. And on the side while I'm thinking about it, it is pretty close to what we were talking about. From the time you roll out the sod till you can actually play on it six to eight weeks, 12 to 14 months for regular seed. And that's if you get the 54 degrees germination that you need to get the initial growth. So, anyway, sorry, I just took a little while. <laughs> okay, are there any more questions? Yeah, I've got a couple specific questions. On the ball stop netting, Stevie, what are, what are we talking about there? Ball stop netting, that is, that's a netting system that covers all four walkways as you walk in between the fields okay. overhead. Because a lot of those we, in the old days, we didn't think too much about it, but somehow you can, when you, when you hit a foul ball and it gets that curvature back, yep. and it was knocking people out just walking down <laughs> in between the The headache fields. factor. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, you're going to look at, we could go through all these, I mean, for the, for the folks here that are concerned about the soccer field and the money, there's a lot of stuff in here that... I agree. Like even the scoreboard, you, you have 4 and 18, I mean, what, what, what type of scoreboard are you uh, figuring that, in? in that is, I guess, that keeps the ball strikes, um, score, there's a different one for baseball and soccer, but again, if... If you, we've had a lot of luck with Pepsi and Cody mm -hmm. just saying, you know, we, for their, their football, they haven't paid for a football, high school football um, scoreboard in 40 years. Yeah. But there, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that is, I'm not sure where they'll come up. All of these will be broken out so that you guys can pick and choose as the project gets closer and we decide that some of these things may be <coughs> done at a later date. And the fields are absolutely the most important thing. Some of the other stuff like the batting cage and the storage area and the finishes on the, the concession stands and all, all that stuff may be stuff we can save some money on without taking away from the overall quality yeah. if the fields are absolutely, you want them right now. But again, and Kevin and I, this has happened a lot of other places. <coughs> They build out everything and then find out they sure wish that one field would they wish they'd done something else with. It. True. After the first year, like man, we are just not getting as much as that as I thought. And now I've got I'm trying to put a soccer field on a baseball field and I've got, you know, part grass, part skin. So if you let, let's say you, you left uh, back down to total numbers, if you leave the three hundred foot baseball softball field off, you leave field seven. 
off as far as a finished product, so to speak. Mm -hmm. To put back the second soccer field into phase one and then put back lighting for one of the soccer fields in phase one, what's, what's the dollar amount there? So lighting for a multi-purpose field is 200,000 bucks. Okay. The multi-purpose field itself is about 209,000. Okay, so you got 210 for the field. Go back down to the lighting, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. sorry. Conduit is 40 per field. Let's go into our what? But now you're you're already putting in. I'm, yeah, I've got the conduit. Two, you're already putting the conduit in the field, so you're just talking about another 160 yes. to actually put the lighting for one. That's right. Of the field. Yep. So 160 for the lighting, two two ten for the field itself. So without taking anything out, if you scroll down to your bottom number, just so I've got it in my head, uh, that seven five eight nine goes up by 370. And the 6868 goes up by 370. Right. Both of these are they move together. And then the other the other question I had earlier was so basically you're saying right here the cost of waiting on phase two is about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If I do my math right. Is that fair to say? The cost of waiting. Because you got nine five minus seven <laughs> five gets you to two, and then we're at two point three five for phase two. So there's a cost of waiting to do that, about 350. Mm, there's some. Uh, there's I mean, it makes sense to me. I'm just curious because I, I would assume that there's some some extra cost to come back well, in. Well, it, it, it's not. We won't be as efficient. Yeah. Or get as good a pricing when we pay when we bid out a okay. smaller amount of work. Sure. That yep. 350 may even be so a little bit I would say for, the, for this discussion, I would say that we haven't taken that into account. That whatever the SOS to build it, the 8.8, .8, that cost just, we didn't change the cost to get down to the 6.8. It may, so the 2.351 million to do the second phase, maybe that, maybe there's a factor in there that needs to say you know, to remobilize and those different things, maybe that's a little bit more. And that 2.3 that's but that well no i mean the only reason it comes up is because the math doesn't work if you if you do 7.5 plus the 2.3 you get 9.8 instead of 9.5 that's that's the only reason it jumped out of me. <coughs> so i just assumed it was a, a cost of waiting so to speak oh right. i don't speak to you but i think they include some of that grant money at 721,000. Mm -hmm. that means somehow that factors into that oh well, well i have a proof of this uh I'm going to do it on Question for the RAD committee itself. Would y'all chime That's in nice for me and uh, nice. tell me the absolute necessity that you all will need for this sports field complex? Like how many soccer fields and how many baseball fields can you, is, is it take away <coughs> field six and seven and you're going to be okay? Or can y'all chime in on that? I'd say you need four baseball fields and three soccer fields. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, just from me looking at it, you guys tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think the natural <laughs> thing to cut out first and foremost until we can afford it is seven. Yeah. Because it's at the end of the complex, it's kind of an odd shape. And I think if we get that triangle connected to seven, it makes sense to try to package that all together. Um, from a baseball perspective, if, if the money's not there, and we don't have field H, and we make the adjustment Kevin was talking about to, to uh, the F there and skin A. I mean, you know, we're going to be able to survive the transition until we're able to finish field six H there. I mean, we can get to the weeds this much tonight. We could say we can start preparing. Let's hey, let's build all four baseball fields, but don't light any of them. Start with. We can build all the soccer. Then you're, then, I mean, speak, again, right. speaking of baseball, you're a detriment there. And, and so, I mean, I think from a baseball standpoint, I would rather give up field H and have lights on on those fields. Okay. Um, and and I, but I also recognize uh, what I'm hearing from representative soccer program, that, and that's why I was curious about the number. So you're looking, in my opinion, we're looking at three hundred seventy thousand that we need to need to find and to get to that six point eight. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll either get there through grant money or donations and maybe before we have to... Uh, 
Well, that was my question. Hopefully. The reason I asked that question is if we can't get the money is, you know, what could y'all live without for a little while till we got private money? That's my question. That's why I ask it. Well, that's what I say on, on from a baseball perspective, field H, not having it would, would not would not kill us from uh, being able to sort of do a better job of scheduling and help out the kids. Certainly it's a benefit to have it, but uh, if you told me I couldn't have something, that's what I would tell you. I'd be curious, not beating a dead horse, but with that triangle that we could possibly get, if we tilted field seven, uh, let's say we had limitless amounts of money. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. If we Sounds tilted, great. Yeah, right? <laughs> if we tilted so, field seven, could we fit another <laughs> soccer field in there? On the triangle? I'm, I'm just thinking long term. If we had that additional piece of property? Right. I think we looked at... I'm just curious. I think we looked at that and we, we actually were able to fit another one in. In that manner. We we looked at that in one of the rooms. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I don't remember either. <laughs> Can I ask this real quick? And, and I'm sorry, I think this hasn't really been answered earlier, but you know, in that first phase when you're talking about only building soccer field two and not field one, is field one though is that area going to be sodded? It's just not going to have lights. I mean, will it be sodded and, and playable just without lights? Planned in the base bid would have sod on. Okay, so we'd be able to mark it and play just when it got dark, which is. Same thing we're dealing with now. So. Yeah, again, the light situation, depending on how the bids come in and how you want to mix and match things, there's going to be options to, to add those at any time in the future. Mm -hmm. Here's another example. And that's not a huge thing to add on. Well, no, here's another example. If we get to the end of the project and old Stevie Boy here has done a good job with his design, that $349,000 of contingency should not have been chewed into. We may have even cut some, some cost if we manage the project aggressively. And so if that happens, then we're looking at multi-purpose lights, one field having 160,000 bucks. Yeah. Maybe that's what comes out at the end of the project. Maybe it goes in at the beginning. I, I mean, that's... These meetings are great, and they're also a little bit discouraging because I, all I can tell you is that I need to be able to make sure you have a great set of data to use moving forward. I can't have one big, huge group of stuff with one big number at the bottom. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. so, so let me, you just, you, you fixed your formulas here. Yeah, I did. Okay, so. I didn't know if you could see me doing it. I, I, I didn't see you doing it, but I see the number. So on the total project cost of phase one, it's seven point, a little over 7.3, 6.6 if we get to 7,000. So you just found enough to put the lights on field. That's why we show up. So, so potentially, you, you could add the lights back in on field two. So we could go back in here. And the reason this one, we were, we were messing with this, like with 10 minutes before you guys sure. came in here. Sure. Trying to figure out what, what items, were. not that we weren't ready for the meeting, but there's really no right answer. So I'm like, okay. Understood. Understood. Right. And we could have showed no soccer field. I was like, well, somebody's going to get beat up in this meeting. I'll get out of the room. I'll get out of the room. But, but for real, in all honesty, just so everybody's aware, based on fixing the calculations, you can add back 180,000, or excuse me, 160,000 for lights on one field. Yeah, we're doing that right now. And you're still under the 6.8 if you get all the grants. And, and so now you've got the two smaller baseball softball fields and the one sort of what would be for the time being a multi-purpose baseball, uh, adult league soc uh, softball, all that. And then you've also got field two with lights for, for soccer, and you've got field one that could be lined and played in the daylight. Just won't have soccer. Just won't have the full sod on it. It that's, won't have that's, sod on it? No, it'd have grass. He's, he's, it'd have grass, not the full sod. Okay, guys. I, I thought they, you were just saying it wouldn't be sod. The town council is getting antsy, and y'all are and getting into details and justifying the so that that you should be involved in. Well, we're not, it's not necessary for us to be involved in this stuff. The city wants the rec commission to introduce uh, 
Would you do that? Introduce, you introduce yourself so we, know all, so we can get you all yeah. on the record. So I just, I, I will say, uh, again, I'm Scott Wilson. I'm the chair of the Rec Commission. And uh, I was not able to attend the last meeting where we had all our new members come. So I do have a list. I've emailed them, but I don't actually know that. So but I can, I can uh, call the roll if you'd like. Tell, tell us or, who's here. Or if you want to go around. Like, yeah. 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 I'm Jimmy Woods. Uh, my name is Brock Hawkins. And I'm president of youth football and the vice president of baseball. Steve Puckett, I'm president of Admiral League. I'm Larry Bay also president of uh, Everybody knows you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is that all? Is that and, all that's on the. And uh, Jennifer Ramsayer is on the commission too, but she could not make it. She's not here. Right. Well, thank you all for coming, and it's nice to meet you all. Uh, I want to thank uh, our staff and uh, CHA for an excellent presentation. It was uh, complete, and I think it was exactly what we needed to make the decisions we need to make going forward. So, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting, and the rec commission and the audience can stay, and the staff can stay and discuss. All the details you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys, you got a five minute break. You just want to go into it. I'm not going to get tough. so far. I mean, tonight, I just want to. No, no, we got a lot of stuff there. We got a lot of stuff there. These guys are I'm not going to